Lisa, I am thrilled you are here. Hello, everybody. Welcome to an amazing conversation with an amazing human being here. Miss Lisa Yohan, hi there. Buongiorno, principessa. Buongiorno, amore. Oh, my goodness. So you may not know this and be able to tell it yet from her first line, but Lisa is Italian, amazing. And just... <laughs> <laughs> with an Irish accent. <laughs> right. Italian with an Irish accent doesn't get any better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So. It's it's so interesting. Uh, my, um, I just have such a love for all things Italian and frankly Irish. And it's, it's, it was such a, a joy to, to have you in the program. You bring such a different perspective to life by your own, you know, each of us has gone through different things and, and it comes from a different background and culture and all of it. And it's just, it's, it's been a delight in every way. And there's, your journey has been such, such a momentous one. I was thrilled when you wanted to share about it and, 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 and tell us about what the, the path is that you've taken. Okay. Share with us. Okay, um, I just got here because I was completely stuck. I was in a moment in my life when everybody was telling me how brilliant I was and how smart I was and how beautiful I was. But I was just like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was just thinking, oh, lies. It's just, yeah, it's useless. I, as I told, one of my friends and ex workmates one day was, I am my worst enemy because I couldn't see that. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody was telling me I was worth a different job and I could do anything I wanted. And I was agreeing. And then I just went, no, I can't. I, I couldn't do anything. I thought I was worthless and I wasn't able to do anything at all not even kill myself when I was thinking about it. And I thought about it for quite a few times. And that was what kept me alive was that I thought I wasn't even good at doing it. So don't even try it. It won't work. You won't make it. So no, I just got clear. Can, can I, uh, uh, excuse me to interrupt. I just, I wanted to create a little frame if I could. Okay. I want to mm -hmm. say you, and this is your experience as a successful, you know, great career, wife, mother, a beautiful daughter. It's, you know, all these things are going well to everybody else going well on the outside, but your experience inside was totally different. I just wanted to make it crystal clear we're not talking about somebody who's never left home in their whole lives, who's never aspired to or dreamt of or accomplished things. You were very accomplished. It's just you weren't having that experience. Thank you for letting me interrupt. No, 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 it's okay. So I was just looking for, um, I was looking for attention. I was looking for something I didn't have in that moment of my life. I was literally stuck. I was just like, yes, I'm going to change this, this and that, but I couldn't do it. There was something just keeping me there exactly where I was. And I was showing that to everyone. I was always unhappy. I was always angry. I was always upset. I was crying most of the times and I couldn't help myself. And I wasn't any help for anybody around me, especially for my daughter who is almost six. And she was the one, she was my inner voice. She was the one who once told me, why are you not like all the other moms? You're never happy. You're always upset. You're always angry. So that brought me to the first breakthrough session I had in November, but still I thought it wasn't worth it. So I just didn't sign up. And I spent weeks crying again because you're no good, even at signing for a program. Mm. So why should they sign you in? You're an Italian, you're just customer service, you're doing nothing special. So why should they sign you in? 
you're no good for that program. So that was what was repeating me on. And then things got worse in the sense that you know, another day my daughter, I don't remember what happened, but she just ended up shouting at me. Um, I just wanted to tell you I had a fantastic day and you just had to shout. You were not even listening to me. So I just went, uh, okay, so we're making damage here. And I am not happy in any case. I don't know what happiness is any longer. So I don't want to live another day like this, feeling like this. That's why I got here, because I couldn't send one more day yeah. thinking about, um, about that. And I knew where it all came from because I had I've been abused as a child. So that was something that just kept living with me. It was a nightmare that followed me everywhere I went. So I had to find a way out because I had tried therapy, I had tried everything and still I wasn't happy. And I didn't want my daughter to be just like me. She was asked to improve in her uh, swimming lessons and she just went, no, 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 I'll stay here because I'm no good. And when I heard that, I just said, uh oh, oh, uh oh, there you go, little Lisa. <laughs> there she is. So I'm making a mess. So I just got here and the miracle happened. It just, it was tough. I had to face my nightmares and I, it wasn't easy, but I feel completely different now. I am happy. I am joyful. I feel I can do things. I feel I can change things. And I will change things just because I want to. It's not someone telling me you should do that. You should change your job. You should do this. You should do that because you're worth it. I think I'm worth it. I want to get the life I dream of because I deserve it. I've been in hell for 36 years. And I, you know, the, the Buongiorno Principessa comes from a movie that taught me so much and I've been thinking about it during the last few months. Like, no matter what, the life is beautiful. You just have yeah. to find your way out of hell. And once you find it, it's all other journey. It's completely different. So that's, that's where I got the new me at 43. <laughs> you yeah. just had your birthday and that's, yeah. that's what you said you have now for your birthday present is a new me at 43. Yeah. When you originally came to us, may I share some of the things that, that you absolutely about? Yeah. When you originally came to us, you shared about, you said, I've got a lack of self-esteem. I'm angry and frustrated all the time. And one of the things you said was that you were scared to death for your future because you cannot change yourself. Now, what do you think about that now and your ability to change yourself? I feel confident I can change everything. And uh, I, am, I am creating a path for my future. I am visualizing what I want to do and how I want to feel and what can be good for me. And if it's good for me, I can be a contribution to other people around me. Yeah. If I am the person I was before, it, it wouldn't help anyone. And I don't need to be seen any longer. Like in the past, I wanted to be seen. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So when I was a teenager, I was hiding myself, you know, no makeup, no, just dressing like a boy so that nobody would see me. And if they saw me, it was just to say, oh, there must be something wrong with that girl. Look at her. She's, you know, alternative indie kind of girl. That was another way to show me. And then it became the opposite. Like, I'm not showing you what's inside. I'm just showing you everything is perfect on the outside. And I am perfect at work. I'm the best worker. And I can, you know, perfectionism was my key. I just had to prove I was necessary for everyone. Yeah. I was doing my work at the best. 
so they needed me when I most needed someone like you know I am just quoting um, I got here because of a video I've seen on the Facebook Rice Tribe and that was by the interview with Lisa not Lisa and she said uh, I waited all my life for someone to rescue me and that is what changed me I said yes exactly that's exactly how I feel I've been waiting all my life for someone to rescue me and nobody has come and nobody will come so it's up to me now I know what it's like so what can go worst it's just maybe I'll improve my English if something doesn't work that was my thinking like <laughs> I'll improve my English in any case if something goes wrong but still I I need to try I have to try otherwise there is just one way out and I didn't want to get there I could take it as an option if what this you didn't mean, work in your own life is that what you mean oh end my own life yeah if this doesn't work that is that was my way that is what I was thinking I, and was that no, something you were actually had actually contemplated I mean yeah yeah I had in the past I had quite a few times yes quite a few times because I thought I was useless I was useless for my family I was useless for everyone so and and you'd known that the 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 genesis of that was because you were abused as a child and, yeah. and so you knew that you knew that it had stemmed from the abuse but you still weren't able to change absolutely because I felt like nobody noticed that I had changed. Nobody you noticed that. Originally, do you mean? Sorry? Do you mean when it originally occurred? Yeah, I just felt from that moment that nobody would, that nobody had noticed that something went wrong with me. You know, I was a chatty little one. I was a happy little child. And all of a sudden, shy, speechless. Yeah. So there was something wrong and I just said, well, nobody notices, nobody knows. So I just removed it for quite a few years. And then I became a teenager and you know, there are the boys and you have to get there. And, and that's the moment where you just, your fears pop up. Yeah. And so from that moment on, I just relieved the nightmare. It came back and it was with me all the time. So I was just hiding it. But still, I was just like, nobody's seen me. There is so, nobody who sees me. Yeah. So the nightmare of your childhood just kept repeating. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. There's, there's something we talk about. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. There's something we talk about in the program, which is that knowing the problem, like knowing the genesis of, of the problem you were dealing with. You'd like that, that uh, wanting to end your own life, the, the feeling broken inside. Everybody would s said how great your life was, but to you, they were all lying. You felt worthless. So knowing the genesis of that was the abuse you suffered as a child and being able to fix it. What we say in the program is those are actually 180 degrees apart. And what's so vexing for most of us is that we when we see the cause of why we're stuck, of why we're suffering, of why we're hurting, we think seeing the cause is going to solve it, but it doesn't. Finding the cause and fixing the cause are truly 180 degrees apart. It's why we say in the program that finding the cause is the booby prize, because we think that seeing it will give us resolution, but it doesn't, which can be more hurtful more painful than not knowing. I don't know why I'm this way. At least then people are on the search for, then why am I this way? But still that doesn't find resolution. So here you are, smart, successful, great wife, mother, all this, and yet you're feeling broken and worthless, useless in your own words. And so you came in and we got to work on the right things, the things that actually heal you and stop the replication of that past trauma. So in, in, in Break Free Formula, we aren't focused on the past. 
for the sake of the past, like in one regard, who cares? The only reason we care is because it's manifesting today in your present life. And it was making you this smart, successful person who seemingly has it all together. It was making you want to take your own life. How was that for you, Lisa? Um, the thing is that you, you were saying it right. You, I was seeing, I knew what it all, where it all started. But the thing is that I wanted to get rid of it. I just wanted to stop that scene repeating. And the anger that was coming from that moment of me feeling guilty, feeling shameful. Uh, for, just to give you an idea, my first email, I created it off a record I loved, which was shame by bread. So my first email was my shame. And I lived with that email for how long was it? 96. So for 20, God, I lost the count of it. That no. was your email address. My that shame. was my email address. My shame. Holy moly. Yeah. So, you know, I was feeling guilty. I was feeling shameful. I knew it was all belonging to that, but I wanted to stop it. I just yes. wanted. So through the program, I just went to a stage where I really got to a moment when I said, mentally to my abuser i was actually saying we're done honestly we're done it's over and i don't need to relieve this scene any longer i don't i don't need to feel like this any longer it's gone yes honestly it was peace finally saying that can be a contribution to someone who's been through that but as for me, I will say it. I will talk about it only if someone asks and if that might be helpful for someone. But I am not leaving that scene any longer. Yes. It's gone. Closed door. It's closed. Yeah. It's gone. So that is what has changed for me. It's just from visualizing to facing it, to getting through it. And it's hard. I must admit, it's really hard. But then it's a feeling you can't explain until you live it, until you really get through the eye of the needle. And then you feel, oh, okay, there's the ocean in front of me. <laughs> and, you know, you learn to, uh, I don't know if you said that, whoever said that, you learn to fly only once you jumped off the cliff. Yes. So once you go, it's, yes, okay, I can fly. And now I feel I can fly. I can now. Yes. I don't know where, where I'll go, where the wind will take me, but I know I can fly. That's the main difference. Amen to yeah. that. Mm. You'd said, you know, before you started, before we started working together, one of the things you talked about was that part of the impact of the abuse that you'd faced as a girl was that you felt helpless in the present moment, like you had to seek advice from other people on absolutely every decision in your life. Talk about that. Would you say something about that? Um, you know, I didn't trust myself because I thought that I, I wasn't smart enough to understand it that very moment that I was getting into trouble. So I didn't trust myself. So for anything, really anything, I was just like, mm, this is not the right decision. So since that, you cannot trust yourself because you've not been smart enough as a child to understand, to see the danger. So God. always ask for during someone who is abuse? smarter. During the original abuse, you mean? Uh, yeah. So yeah. I wasn't smart enough to see that the abuse was coming. I got yeah. myself into this situation. So that's where all the shame spiral started. Yeah. I got it. And then yeah. I'm not smart enough. So thank you for clarifying. So then it became, I'm now, I can't trust myself in any decision. And you'd said, even if it was something as innocuous as I want to cut my hair, you would go ask other people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What other kinds of things did you ask advice on? Uh, yeah. Even on the, Oh God. Uh, on my daughter, on when I had my daughter, I just said, 
postpartum depression because I was, I felt I was not capable to mind my young daughter. So I was always asking for someone to tell me what to do. And I was always, I was asking for everything really like, you know, what do you think? What is just, should we go on holiday? Should we go there or shouldn't we? Oh, maybe I should apply to that job. Oh no, maybe not. What do you think? It was with everyone. I wasn't taking a decision. I wasn't, or maybe I was taking a decision and one minute later I was just like, oh no, 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 that is no good. And if someone suggested me something I didn't like, I got that chance to put the blame on someone else. Yeah. You know, just like, oh, well, I did it because she told me. Yeah. So, you know, that's, and then I got angry because I didn't choose. So it was my fault because I let someone else choose something that I did not want to do. And so you, know, I was, you can see so how it perpetuated upon itself. You're stuck. Oh, yeah. You're asking for other questions and not making any decisions, letting other people make them. And it just like digs you in more deeply. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Hmm. And hmm. so how is it now, Lisa? Oh, now it is that um, I don't, I don't need others. You know, I can make it on my own. Honestly, it's just, I, I do not want to be misunderstood, but that's what I said during the call. Like, if one day my husband would just come here and say, you know what, I don't love you anymore. I just want to leave. I'd be like, mm, okay, but that's your problem. It's not my problem. Maybe we can try to solve this up, but I'm not to get desperate because you don't love me anymore, because I can't live without you anymore. And what am I going to do without you? Oh, it's not that anymore. It's just, I can make it. For the first time in my life, I can say, I can make it on my own because I know that what I decide will do me good. And I know how to be happy. And I know the feeling of being happy after so many years. And if you want to join my, my journey, you're welcome. But if you're taking your direction, if I like it, yes. But if I don't like it, if it doesn't suit me this time, no, sorry. Maybe we find, we find a deal. But I am not letting you choose for my life any longer. Nobody can tell me what I have to do with my life. Yeah. I am deciding what I'm going to do with my life and what will make me happy, my family happy. I know what's best for me and my family. And the amazing thing is, as you've been coming to the program each week and sharing, it's the relationships all around you are getting, those are getting fortified. Those are getting better. As you rise, everyone around you is rising. And it's yeah. you talked about even the most intractably stuck relationships in your life before and yeah. how those have totally altered. It's, it really isn't, you know, you'd gone from before where you didn't trust yourself. So you asked things of other people that weren't appropriate to ask them, you know, questions that were only pertinent to you. And then it didn't, it just wasn't working out for you. So you took your own life by the reins and have been changing things. And it's not just that you've become happier but you've talked about how everyone around you has and saying what you just said about, even if my husband were to leave, it's not that your marriage isn't going well. Now it actually, you've talked about how much better it's all going. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, absolutely. You're not, you're not yeah. at fate, you're not at the whim of anybody else any longer. You, it really is that, like that phrase, a rising tide rises all ships, but you've caused the tide to raise. You're having people around you raise up with you, not just you. You're bringing everyone else up around you, aren't you? Yeah. And now, I'm not, sorry, yeah. sorry. Go ahead, please. No, and I'm not like, for instance, my husband is working a lot these days. And in the past, I would be like, oh, there you go. He's not spending time with me. He doesn't love me anymore. And he wants to stay at work all, all day long and all night long because of blah, blah, blah. 
no, if it just tells me it's late, well, these bees at work. So I'm not complaining. He's walking in and I'll just ask, so how was your day? What happened? Can I help? And if he says no, that's okay. If he's having a bad day, if he's in a bad mood, I just leave him alone. I'm not going to be like, it's my fault. Yeah. In the past, that would have been like, oh, he's upset with me. I'm not doing enough. Yeah. I need to do more. I need to be a better wife. I need to be a better housekeeper. House <laughs> must be clean and tidy and perfect. And now maybe he walks in and he just goes, oh, what, what a mess. And I'll just say, oh, it's been a busy day for me too. I didn't have time. I will do it later. But I don't get upset. I don't get wind up. I just just let it go. He's having just a no moment. Just leave him alone. And, and by doing that, he doesn't feel judged. And I don't feel judged. So we talk a lot more. And there is more, you know, there is, it's completely different. And what is really funny is that um, when I'm having one of those moments when I just go, uh, when I get worried or whatever, he just walks in and without saying a word, he just goes like, oh, what's happening? And because he can see the difference from before the program and now. So he just doesn't need to ask me what's wrong. He just sees something is wrong. And as soon as he sees that, I just go like, oh, oh yes, this, this, this and that happened. And once I say it, it's gone again. Mm -hmm. I don't need to rework and to have that self talking longer. It's just, that's it. We had a chat and let it go. Just yeah. off it went to the trash bin. Now you talked about your daughter and how she was part of the impetus for you being here in the first place. The, some of the words she said, how do you find that this newfound happiness and this putting yourself back together, how has that impacted you as a, as a mom? As a mom, I yeah. am more confident. First of all, like uh, I'm more playful. It's not all about, okay, we have to do this and it's late and blah and blah and blah. And I'm still working on that. I'm not saying that everything is perfect and I am a perfect mom and, you know, it's like I'm kind of Mary Poppins, um, not like that. But it's a work in progress and just it's a new me and it's a new relationship and it's, uh, you know, I I think she's, I appreciate her more and she's, you know, she's braver and she's more courageous than before because, you know, she's supported. In the past, I would have been ju very judgmental on her, like, don't do this, don't do that. And I don't, I don't care now any longer. It's just enjoy life, enjoy it as much as you can. And I just enjoy being with her. In the past, I wouldn't. I wouldn't enjoy being with my daughter. I would find excuses for not being there. And now it's it's totally different. I want her to be happy. You can just imagine the ramifications that that will have on her whole life. Yeah. You know, those yeah. around us, like it or not, they live in our wake. And if we're upset and angry all the time, as you were before we found one another and before you found your way on the phone with us, if you're upset and unhappy all the time, even if we don't want it to rub off on those around us, it rubs off on those around us. It can't help but do that, particularly for your daughter who's five. Mm -hmm. And even though you wanted to be a good mom and you were dedicated to it and the way you expressed it at the time was striving for perfection. Well, the last I checked, no five-year-old can be perfect. So it's like, it's natural that, that she would feel like she's coming up short. And now that you've taken this on and given up your striving for perfection in your own life and just are playful with her, and you know, you're, you're getting to this place where you no longer feel useless yourself. It's so easy to imagine how that will rub off on her and how she too will be able to find her own use and her own worth and her own value because you have found the same and that will rub off on her. 
for her life. Yeah, I was thinking about, you know, before starting the, this program, I was thinking I was not a good mom at all at the point where I was, you know, maybe I just give up everything because I'm not a good example and she will not be a good child because of me. So maybe if I leave, it's going to be easier. It will be tough at first, but then she, she'd be better without me. And now I don't, it's so far away. It is really so far away. I can see where I was before. I can see it. And I remember that feeling and I see the difference now yeah. and the power behind it of, you know, I don't want to get there any longer. No, no. Can I ask, how has this journey that you've taken impacted your mental state, specifically the anxiety that you dealt with in the past? How oh. has it changed that? Uh, it has changed in the sense that I still have it, but you get such powerful tools. You just, you have it and you just go like, okay, how can I get out of this mental state? And maybe it would take me days and weeks. Uh, to, in the past. Yes, in the past. And now it's a matter of minutes. Like, wow. you know, I recognize, I recognize it's, oh, okay. I have a panic attack. So what am I going to do now? Just get up, just get up, just go and have a cup of tea. Just, and if I am off work, I'll just put some music on and just get, be present. And then off it goes. You just recognize it. In the past, I would just go to <laughs> medicines and pills and drops and whatever, just to calm me down. Yeah. And now it's, I don't need any of that stuff any longer. I just, I just need to be present. Mm -hmm. And I know that music is my key. So I know that just put some music on and have a dance solo party and that is going to stay change. And I know that's going to work, you know, that is going to, or run. Like maybe you're just super anxiety and in super anxiety and you just go, uh, just run, 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 like 50 meters, whatever, just run. And then, oh, okay, I'm fine. You have tools, you have tools I wouldn't imagine I could yeah. get and I know how to get out of that situation. It's that amazing for what it is to be the, you know, the human condition. And, and to be clear, if you're watching this video, we're not saying it's, <laughs> we're not saying, Hey, put on some music, run and drink <laughs> panic attacks. But the deep work that you did, that's the answer. And that allows you to now use these simple little tools to actually get present. The deep work that you did, the digging yeah. deep and doing the right work. You'd been trying for a lifetime after knowing that the childhood abuse was the source of it. You'd been trying to, to take it apart and dismantle it yourself. I acknowledge you for being smart enough to put yourself here in this program to actually dismantle the panic attacks and the anxiety and the depression once and for all. They may do whatever they do now, but now you're the one that's in the control not those yay yeah. Yeah. that is that is a, a a a breakthrough for what it is to be a human being yeah i absolutely acknowledge you it is it has been a an honor and a gift to be your coach thank you for putting yourself in my hands and the hands of of my amazing team Thank you for saying yes to you for all the impact that you will have in this world and for the, the situation and environment now that your daughter will grow up inside of and the gift that you are to your husband and your family and your coworkers and everyone who comes in contact with you. You did Thank that. you. Thank you for, for this opportunity, for this program, for the people I met during these weeks it's it's just the support you get it it's amazing and it's not like i just want to say uh it's not like 
I am Lisa, I'm 42, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's not that kind of a support, you know, where, welcome, Lisa. It's just, <laughs> it's not that. Uh, it's not that. It's, it's just like friends. They know what it's like. They've been through, they are through it. And, you know, it's, it's an amazing journey. And I am so glad. I really think it's a blessing. It's a miracle. And, you know, it's a life changing experience. Honestly, it is a life changing experience. It's worth it. It's, it's worth it. Absolutely. Thank you. You started when you reached out, you, one of the things you'd mentioned was that you never felt that, that the people in your life cared about you really, truly deeply. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. the only way they would ever come together and show their support for you was if what? At my funeral. Yeah. Yeah. If I die, if I kill myself and everybody would be like, Oh God, I didn't know. I didn't know. Honestly, I couldn't imagine she would kill herself for, Oh, was she? Oh my God. But that was the only moment when everybody would say, Oh, Lisa, blah, 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 blah. And that was the only moment I could, I could picture that thing. I could picture myself having a car crash and everybody at the hospital, like running there and praying and crying. And, but that was what I was living with. Oh, finally, someone is going to see me. Yeah. So that was the only moment I could picture myself being seen. And Lisa, the most important person finally sees you. Mm. Who's that? Yes, me. Yeah, yeah. me. And, and that's me. the key right there. And that's why you don't need to be seen by anybody else. It's, it's lovely when they do, but you finally see you and love mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. It's like, love myself. yes, there's a woman, Ellen, a graduate of Break Free Formula as well, who shared her story not all that long ago and what she said in right here in Rise Tribe and if, in Facebook, she said, I am the love of my life. And I hear that same love for you, for yourself. So yeah. I, just, I have to ask for mm -hmm. anybody who's watching and, and wondering what, with regard to you ending your own life, what's the probability of that now? No, oh, no, 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 no. There's so much to do. Life is beautiful no matter what. There is so much to do. There is no, why? Why should I? Yeah. It's just I can help, I can contribute, I can, you know, uh, I've been through hell and I know what it's like. So why should I just go back there? No, no, it's not worth it. Not any longer. It's just, it's gone. For God's sake, it's gone. The pain is gone. So, no. no. The pain is gone. I will yeah. leave it right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing your heart and your story and your journey with us. I'm deeply Thank honored. You Thank you for that gift. Thank you. Keep rising, beauty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the beginning. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Beautiful. The pain is yeah. gone. Yes. The Thank pain you. is gone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Oh, wait. Heavens to Betsy. Hold on, but we can't end yet. How do you have the pain be gone in your own life? Here. When you, like Lisa, are ready for the pain to be gone in your own life, go here. CherylHunter.com forward slash schedule. Because it's time we talk so that you too can stop the suffering and the pain in your own life. And my team and I will do this. We'll get on a free breakthrough session with you. And we'll look at what is not up to your standards, what's not working for you. And then we'll take a look at where you want to go. And if we can help you get there and shortcut your journey, we'll absolutely show you how. But regardless, we're committed that this call change your life. 
So just go here right now, CherylHunter.com forward slash schedule and book your free breakthrough session. I'll drop it in chat later as well so that you've got that, but that's where to find us. And that's the next step. Go book that now. CherylHunter.com forward slash schedule. Oh, Lisa, such a joy. My pleasure. My joy. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye.